Good morning and welcome to today's video. Now I'm sure most of you guys are here because of the thumbnail and we'll get right to it. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about this F-350 right here and this F-450 right here and how they're exactly the same truck. No, they're not. What do you mean they're not? All right, in today's video, we're gonna talk about this F-350 right here and this F-450 right here and how they're not the same truck. This one's black and this one's red. There's more than that. All right, in today's video, we're gonna talk about this F-350 right here and this F-450 right here and how they are in no way the same truck. This one can only drive in straight lines and this one turns really, really good. Cut, that's no better. So you mean to tell me the big fuss about this truck is that one turns really good and this one doesn't? Doesn't make any sense. All right, in today's video, we're gonna talk about this F-350 right here and this F-450 right here and how they are in no way the same truck. This one turns really good, this one doesn't. Also, this one has 100 more 50s. All right, man, are we gonna do this or not? In today's video, we're gonna talk about this F-350 right here and this F-450 right here. We're gonna show all the things that are different and all the things that are the same. We're gonna do some real world driving and when we're done here, we're gonna get my camper, which is a Grand Design Momentum 397TH, and we're gonna hook it to both trucks and do some real world testing. Before we get started, let's meet the trucks. So before we get started with both of these trucks right here, some of you may not like some of the things I'm about to say about either one of these trucks. And I would love to have a conversation with all of you guys in the comments, but wait till the end of the video. My opinion on both these trucks might surprise you. All right, so the first truck up is my 2020 Ford F-350 in the platinum trim. It's got a 6.7 liter diesel, the third generation, with a 10 speed transmission and a 410 rear end. Now we just looked it up on the Ford uh, towing spec sheet and it says this thing is capable of 34,700 pounds towing. Now, we'll talk about the King Ranch. Up next is this 2021 Ford F450 in the King Ranch trim. It's also got a 6.7 liter diesel in the third generation. It's got a 10 speed transmission and it has the 430 rear end. Now we also just look up the max towing capacity and it says it's 34,600 pounds. So that one right there can actually pull 100 pounds more than this one according to the Ford spec sheet but this video is not about that and you'll see later why those numbers do not matter for what we're trying to show you today so this is the door sticker on the f-350 and it has a 14,000 pound gross vehicle weight rating the front axle is rated at 5,990 pounds and the rear axle is rated at 9,900 pounds it also has a payload capacity of 5,375 pounds okay this is the door sticker on the ford f-450 it also has a 14,000 pound gross vehicle weight rating with a front axle rating of 6,000 pounds and a rear axle rating of 9,900 pounds it also has a payload capacity of 4,845 pounds so both of these trucks, the F450 and the F350, both have a gross vehicle weight rating of 14,000 pounds. But the F350 actually has a payload capacity 530 pounds heavier than the F450. 
Now the next difference you'll see is the tires and rims they're sitting on. The F350 comes on 17 inch aluminum rims and the F450 comes on these beautiful 19 and a half inch aluminum rims. So the main reason the F450 sits on 19 and a half inch aluminum rims is because what's right behind it. And the 450s come with the wide track front end, enabling tighter turning radiuses as well as it comes equipped with bigger brakes. So the F450 comes with 7,000 pound coil springs as well as a beefed up front frame section right there. The F350 comes with 6,500 pound coil springs and no beefed up frame section. Now the F350 front axle rating is 5,990 pounds, whereas that one is rated at 6,000 pounds. So only a 10 pound difference in the front axle ratings. The rear end of the Ford F350 has the same axle housing as the Ford F450, but it comes with standard axle shafts. It has a 410 rear end. It can also come in a 373 or a 355 and it sits on 17 inch aluminum rims. The rear end of the Ford F450 has the same axle housing as the 350, but it has a 430 rear end as well as upgraded axle shafts. It also comes with the beefed up brakes from the front and it also sits on 19 and a half inch aluminum rims. All right, so this is the rear leaf spring on the Ford F350. It has four leaves and an overload. This is the rear leaf spring on the Ford F450. It also has four leaves and an overload. More on that later when we hook my camper up to them. All right, so this is the Ford F350 and the rear conventional hitch is a three inch receiver and it's rated at 21,200 pounds. The rear conventional towing hitch on the F450 also has a three inch receiver, but it has a rating capacity of 24,200 pounds. So the 450 is actually rated to tow more conventionally than the F350. All right, now that we've discussed all the major differences on the outside of this truck, we're gonna get inside and show you the inside of both the F350 Platinum and the F450 King Ranch. So this is the interior of the Ford F350 Platinum. And I think it comes as well equipped as any Super Duty does, only the limited trim is above this one. And I'm not even sure what the differences are. Now I may miss a few things, but I'm gonna start here at the steering wheel and do my best to cover everything in this truck. So right here at the steering wheel, you have a bunch of buttons. This group of buttons right here controls your little screen up here that tells you everything you know about the truck, what it's doing. It even has the tire pressure alarms and the maintenance monitor and all kinds of stuff up there. Right here is your cruise control. We also have adaptive cruise control. This right here is your hands free for your phone and this right here is your radio controls. This truck also comes with adaptive steering. So when you're going slow, a small turn makes the tires turn more. When you're going fast, a normal turn makes the tires turn normal. Now we also have this giant navigation screen infotainment center which is pretty much standard nowadays but when you get this you get all kinds of things that are integrated from the screen to all these buttons we also have our radio controls right here and we have our air conditioning controls right here we also have heated and cooled seats right here we have a wireless phone charger and up here we have our upfitter switches and right behind that is this giant moon roof Another thing is this thing is equipped with the Marsala leather. It looks just like that right there, but it's covered up with seat covers because we travel full-time with kids and we wanted to protect this beautiful leather. Also, it has this reverse backup button, which I'm not even sure if it works. I've never tried it. I don't know if you can do it with the fifth wheel. Here's our brake controller. Here's our four-wheel drive. We also have an exhaust brake and a hill descent. Never used that one. Use that one every time we pull. So that about does it for the interior of this truck. I'm sure I missed some things but you get the idea. It's a very well equipped truck and it's very comfortable. So this is the interior of the Ford F450 in the King Ranch trim. And it is very similar to the Ford F350 as far as all the steering wheel controls, all the maintenance monitor and all the screen up there. The navigation screen infotainment center is the same. All your buttons for your radio and your climate control, your heated and cooled seats. They even have this awesome King Ranch leather, which Sometimes I'm not sure what I like better. Our Marsala leather and the, and the uh, four, or 350 or the King Ranch leather and this 450. The only difference between the two trucks is this one does not have the adaptive steering or the adaptive cruise control. It doesn't have the uh, TPMS sensors and he does not have the upfitter switches, but I believe that's that you can add that, no problem. He also has the giant moon roof. I also forgot to mention, both trucks come with a push button start Here's his four wheel drive controls, his backup trailer assist, his brake controller, exhaust brake, and the hill descent control. So I just showed you the inside of the F350 and the F450. And as you can tell, 
there is virtually no difference in the size of these cabs or the amenities offer. The F-350 Platinum has a few more things than the F-450 King Ranch, but they can all be added. So the inside of these trucks are virtually the same. It's only what trim level you want to purchase. So the outside of these trucks is where things really start to get different. We've shown you that the Ford F-450 comes with a wide track front end and beefier brakes. It also has an upgraded front frame section as well as 500 pounds stiffer springs than the 350. The rear end is also different. It comes with a 430 gear set as well as beefier axle shafts and that whole thing sits on 19 and a half inch aluminum rims. Now we're about to do some real world testing with both these trucks and find out if any of that stuff actually matters. We're about to test drive both of these trucks without the trailer attached to see what the differences are. But before we do that, we're gonna hit the thing all you came here to see. How tight does this bad boy turn? And how tight does that thing right there not turn? Funny story, we're trying to set up for the turning test and the 350 is already having to back up and try again. We're not even doing the test yet, but it's already not looking good for him. So we're gonna start with the Ford F350 to see how tight it does not turn. And here's our test. So we're set up on this line right here. We have an Anderson bucket to mark where we started. And because we're trying to simulate a U-turn, we're gonna turn until we are parallel with that line over there. Meaning we made a full turn from this way to this way. And we're gonna measure the difference. So he's gonna start right now. We're gonna see how tight she turns. All right, that's like 56 feet. All right, so the Ford F-350 takes an entire parking lot or 56 feet to turn around time for round two let's see what this f450 turning radius is all about same test setting up on the line we have our old bucket over there where the 350 made it and we're gonna do the same u-turn test and ideally if it's true this guy right here should be closer than that one let's go All right, well, there it is. The F-350 turned around right here. The F-450 is right there. We're gonna get the tape measure out. Ford says it's about eight feet. That looks about eight feet. All right, just so we can make sure we knew what we were talking about, we went ahead and measured the entire turning radius and the F-450 turned in 48 feet, two inches, as opposed to the F-350 and 56 feet. So it's about eight feet tighter turning. So now that we're done checking out the turning radius, we're gonna drive both of these trucks. Now, since I always drive the F-350, Eric's gonna drive the F-350 and tell us his opinion on the differences. Now I'm gonna get in his truck and drive his and tell you my opinion on his truck. So we're gonna get started and we'll talk about what he thinks is different or what is the same.
test driving the Ford F-350, my truck, and I'm riding shotgun, and I'm actually gonna be the one looking at you because Eric is a little camera shy, but he wants to give his opinion on what he thinks about driving this truck after the little loop we did through town. So what, is, what, are, your, what are your differences you notice? It drives very similar to the 450, but it's a lot smoother. So it's a lot smoother. And we think that's because the 450 rides on the 19 and a half inch commercial tires and rims with 110 PSI in them. Whereas we're on 17 inch tires and rims with 75 PSI in them. But so far, that is the only difference that he notices in this truck. Now we're about to grab the 450 and I'm gonna drive it and I will tell you guys what the differences are that I think there is between the two trucks. I had to try it out for myself. And this thing feels like it's got like three extra teeth on the turning. Like where her mind stops, this one keeps going. We're, bit, we're literally staying in the parking spot doing circles around this light pole. I will say, I like to make fun of the people that talk about this train radius, but it is kind of cool. This would take me some getting used to. I feel like I'm just ready to rip a duel off right now because this truck turns before it's supposed to. Like on my truck, you know where the duel is gonna be. With yours, I just turned back there and almost curb checked it because I wasn't expecting the truck to turn. <laughs> and I will say it is slightly noticeably rougher but it's not actually that bad it just rides like a truck I would say maybe a little bit more noticeable every every expansion joint and bump in the road you feel but the turning radius I'm not even using it because I'm used to driving an F-350 so I've been swinging wide not knowing that I could go it takes too to used to like it will turn sharper than you think but I'm used to the 350 so every turn we've taken I've driven as though I was in my truck and then I realized, oh, you can turn sharper. So I think it would take some getting used to, but it is pretty awesome. But I forget it's there because I'm used to my truck. We just finished test driving both the trucks. Now we're over here at the camper. We're about to hook it up to both the trucks, the F-350 and the 450, and we're gonna do some real world testing. So we have the camper, the 450, and the 350, and we're all at the Love Truck Stop. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go fill this thing full of diesel. We have Eric and Phil as passengers, and we're gonna go jump on a scale and see how much this truck weighs. All right, we're driving on the scale. We're about to see how much this truck weighs full of fuel and all of our passengers. So here's the scale slip for the F-350 with all of our passengers and a full tank of fuel. So the steer axle has a weight of 5,400 pounds. The drive axle has a weight of 4,440 pounds for a total weight of 9,840 pounds. Now we're gonna get the F-450 and do the same thing with three passengers and a full tank of fuel. So we have the F-450 full of diesel. We have our passengers. Well, he's a driver now, I'm a passenger. We have Eric, myself, we have Phil. And we're pulling up to the scale to see how much the F-450 weighs full of fuel and passengers. So here is the scale slip for the F-450 with three passengers and a full tank of fuel. So the steer axle is 5,480 pounds. The drive axle is 4,400 pounds for a total weight of the truck of 9,880 pounds. So I'm gonna put both scale slips on the screen for the F-350 and the F-450. On the left side will be the scale slip for the F-350. On the right side will be the scale slip for the F-450. So the F-350 weighs in at 9,840 pounds. The F-450 weighs in at 9,880 pounds. So you take those two numbers, 9,880 pounds, the weight of the F-450, and you subtract the weight of the F-350 of 9,840 pounds, and you get a difference of 40 pounds. The F-450 is only 40 pounds heavier than the F-350. So let's talk about that. Why are the trucks almost the same weight? Well, it's because the F-450 
has only a BMW companion hitch, the puck style, installed in the truck over everything that came from the factory. Whereas the F350 is set up for us in full time living. So, I have a toolbox, a bed cover, a BMW turnover companion hitch, which has a different base, so it might be slightly heavier. We have airbags, an air compressor, and an air tank. So, you're wondering, how much does all that stuff weigh? Well, we can actually figure that out because we can use the payload capacity of, of each truck to figure out the difference in weights of the trucks. And so, both of these trucks are rated at 14,000 gross vehicle weight rating but they have different capacities. That's because the capacity of the truck is the difference in the weight of the truck minus the 14,000. So the F350 comes with a payload capacity of 5,375 pounds. The F450 comes with a payload capacity of 4,845 pounds. So you subtract those two numbers and you get 530 pounds. So that tells us that the F450 stock for stock is supposed to weigh 530 pounds more than the F350. But right now, the F450 only weighs 40 pounds more than the F350. So we can take that number of 530 pounds that's supposed to weigh more than the F350 and subtract the actual weight of 40 pounds, and that leaves us with 490 pounds. So the weight of my toolbox, my bed cover, my turnover companion hitch, the airbags, the air compressor, and the air tank weigh roughly 490 pounds. Why is this important? Well, it's not apples to apples. So if I were to have an F450 equally equipped, you can go ahead and say that it's gonna weigh 490 more pounds than it does right now. So that doesn't really matter because you'll see in the next test that whatever we weigh whenever the camper and truck come together, just know that if it was apples to apples, the 450 would weigh an additional 490 pounds than it does right now. We weighed both the F350 and the F450. Now our next step is we're gonna hook my truck up to the camper and go weigh the entire combo together full of fuel and passengers. But before we do that, we wanna see how much the truck squats when we put the weight on it. Now I have airbags and I've let all the air out. You can see my suspension is completely unsprung and we are sitting at, let's call it 41 inches. Now we're gonna put the weight on the camper and measure how much the rear end squats. So we have the camper hooked to the truck and now we're gonna measure how much the rear end squatted with the weight on it. So we're down to 38 and a quarter. So what's that? Almost three inches of squat. And you can see we are sitting on the overloads. So from 41 to 38 and a quarter. All right, we're sitting on the scale with the truck and the camper and all of our passengers, Phil and Eric. We're gonna see how much the total weight of our combined vehicle weighs. So before we discuss the scale tickets of the trucks and the trailers combined, I wanna add a little disclaimer, a little explanation on what the purpose of this test was. So we wanted to simulate a real world experience. So we purposely had a truck full of people because we wanted to simulate having all your passengers because no one goes RVing by themselves. And we also wanted to simulate a real world weight of an RV. Now, most of the time when the discussion of F450 versus F350 comes up, it always involves a bigger, heavier camper. And for the most part, the people with F450s say they needed the 450 because they needed to handle a bigger weight. Well, we wanted to demonstrate what a bigger weight looked like on both the F350 and the F450. So we purposely tried to weigh my camper as close to 20,000 pounds as possible, so it would be max capacity of my camper. Now, we're gonna talk about the scale slips and what the weight of this camper on both these trucks looks like. So here's the scale slip for the F350 and the trailer hooked up. So we have a steer axle weight of 5,360 pounds. We have a drive axle weight of 8,700 pounds for a total weight of the truck of 14,060 pounds. So fully loaded with a full weight of the camper on the truck, we are 60 pounds over the gross vehicle weight rating of the truck. Now we can use these numbers to find the pin weight of the trailer. So we take the weight of the truck and the RV of 14,060 pounds, and we subtract the weight of the truck only of 9,840 pounds, and that gives us a difference of 4,220 pounds. So our pin weight of this camper is 4,220 pounds. Now we take that pin weight of 4,220 pounds, we add it to the trailer axle weight of 15,640 pounds, and that gives us a total trailer weight of 19,860 pounds. So we are within 140 pounds of the max capacity of 20,000 pounds for this trailer. So we did pretty good getting it close to the max weight. So we have a total combined weight of the truck and the RV of 29,700 pounds. So just like before, when we didn't have the trailer hooked to the trucks, 
Now we're gonna let Eric drive my truck fully loaded and we're gonna follow him in the F450 and he's gonna give us his opinion on what it feels like to drive this truck with weight on it. So we just got done driving the F-350 and the camper and Eric drove because he's used to an F-450 so we wanted to get a good response on what it was like to drive an F-350 loaded down. So what did you think? What was your impressions? I thought it was uh, smoother. Smoother? And other than that, driving down the road. Basically the same. Basically the same. So honestly, the turning, the turning radius is not really a big deal on highway driving, but just now when we were backing into this spot here at the truck stop, he had to actually pull forward and try for a second time because the truck could not catch up to the trailer. We're actually gonna do a test about that later back at the RV site, back in the campers to show the difference between the 450's turning radius and the 350's when trying to maneuver and backing into a spot. So now we're gonna unhook the trailer, we're gonna hook up to the F450, go do a way and do a driving test with me driving since I drive a 350, I'm gonna drive the 450 so I can get my opinion on what's different. So we have the truck disconnected and it's hooked back up to the 450 and we're gonna do a measurement of the wheel gap before we can set the weight down. And right now it's at 42 inches and you can see the springs are not on the overloads. Now we're gonna finish hooking it up and we're gonna set it down and see what it looks like with all the weight on it. We have all the weight set down on the 450 and the new measurement is 39 and a half. So the drop when the weight was applied was two and a half inches and you can see it's on the overload. So it's roughly the same drop as the 350. That must be because it's probably the same rear springs. So we have the F450 hooked to the camper on the scale. Now we're gonna see how much the F450 full of diesel and the passengers, Eric and Phil, weighs. Here's the scale slit for the F450 and the trailer hooked up. So we have a steer axle of 5,440 pounds, a drive axle of 8,680 pounds, for a total weight of the truck of 14,120 pounds. So we are 120 pounds overweight of the max capacity of this truck of 14,000 pounds. But remember earlier when I talked about what would happen if the trucks were equally compared? So if it was equally equipped with all the extra accessories that my F-350 has on it, we would add 490 pounds to the weight of this truck. So the 450 would actually weigh in at 14,610 pounds, which is 610 pounds over the gross vehicle weight rating of this truck. Now, we can find the pin weight of the camper. So we take the weight of the truck in the RV of 14,120 pounds. We subtract the weight of the truck only of 9,880 pounds. And that gives us a pin weight of 4,240 pounds. Now we take that pin weight of 4,240 pounds and we add it to the trailer axle weight of 15,640 pounds. And that gives us a total trailer weight of 19,880 pounds. So the total combined weight of the F450 and the RV hooked together is 29,760 pounds. Now, just like before, whenever Eric drove my truck, I'm gonna get in the F450 right now while him and Phil follow me in my truck and I'm gonna drive the 450 in the camper and I'm gonna give you my opinion on what the differences are between the F350 and the F450 when they're fully loaded.
driving the F450 and the camper right now, and I will say there is not a whole lot of difference. The truck does not have airbags like mine, so I think if you had airbags on the truck, it would ride very similar. It's slightly more rough, as in when it was unloaded too. I still feel all the bumps, but I don't think it's a big enough, it's not a big enough difference to say it's different. They feel about the same. I will say, even at highway speeds, this, uh, this, this steering thing, I'm not used to it because I'm hardly having to turn the wheel at all to make these curves in the road. So I will say the, uh, the steering thing might be a plus, not only in parking lots and maneuvering, also at highway speeds, because I'm not really turning the wheel very much at all. Even though mine has adaptive steering, I think this, I'm turning even less to maneuver the truck down the highway. So we're gonna head back to the RV park now, and we're gonna do a parking test with the F-350 and the F-450. All right, so we're back at the RV park, and since the last test, the 450 was hooked to the trailer, we're gonna let it back the trailer in first. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna see how the F450 handles backing this trailer into this side. Now it's not a hard sight, but it has a sharp turn right here, and normally it takes me two tries. So I'm actually curious to see, can the 450 do it in one attempt without pulling forward to get it in the spot? So we're gonna see if the F450 can back this camper in to that spot in one try. You ready? So he missed the curve right there. Now let's see if he can chase it over into the spot without having to pull that forward. And it looks like he's gonna pull it off. All right, so the 450 did it in one try. We pulled the F450 out of the way. We're getting the F350. We're gonna hook it back up. Pull it out of here. We're gonna make the whole loop around and come back and set up from scratch and see if he can back it in with the F-350. Also, I don't know if I mentioned this, part of the rules are the trailer cannot leave right here where these tire marks are and the truck is not supposed to go in the grass over there. So this would not be hard if you're allowed to go in the grass, but for the test, the trailer has to stay right here and the truck cannot go in that grass right there. He's pulling out with the F-350. He's gonna make the loop. And then he's gonna come back and set up and see if he can make it in the spot without having to pull forward. Remember, trailer cannot go off right here and the truck cannot go in the grass over here. All right, here he comes. Let's see if he can do it in less than two tries. My money is it's gonna take him two because I put this thing in this spot quite a few times and I can never get it right without having to pull back forward at least once. All right. Here he goes. Let's see if he can back it in in only one try. All right, he cleared the sidewalk but let's see if he can get to catch up to the trailer before he runs into the grass over here. He's chasing it. He's chasing it. He's not on the grass. Well, let's do it. It's doing it. Let's see if you can do it. But you're going to touch the grass over there now, I bet. Oh, dang. <laughs> <laughs> so he, in fact, did not win. The F-350 took two tries to back in the spot. It's because when the camper got turned around, the truck could not catch it, and it kept going this way. So he had to pull forward to straighten out and come back in for a second try. I will say that is a pretty cool feature of the F450 because it lets you maneuver this camper really easy in tight quarters. So I asked him to move the camper over to the edge of the thing and the truck will do it, but the driver can't because he's used to a truck that'll turn. It's not his fault. He expects the truck to do things it's not doing. 
his truck, it probably would have worked for my truck. I could do it, but I'm used to the way it's going to turn. So that's not a knock on the trucks. It's just a knock on the drivers that we're not used to the way these things turn. All right, guys. So I really enjoyed making this video and it's been a few days of editing and I finally have everything wrapping up and I wanted to come have a conversation with you guys. Some final thoughts as you will. So what was the purpose of me making this video? Well, there's a huge F-350, F-450 debate out there. And every time you look for answers, our Facebook groups, YouTube videos, it's always one guy has an F-350 and he gives you his opinion on a 450. Or the guy has a 450 and gives you his opinion on a 350. Or they may tow a trailer or they may do a side-by-side -side test, but it's never really apples to apples. I had never seen where we take an F-350 and an F-450, do rear-wheel driving with both owners, and then hook a trailer to it, do some driving, and also scale everything and put real-world data on the paper. So that's what we decided to do. We wanted to do real-world testing. That's when we filled our trucks full of people because everyone camps with people. We also wanted to have real-world numbers on the camper. That's why we purposely tried to load the camper to max capacity of 20,000 pounds. We were almost there. We were like 19,880 pounds, so pretty close to max capacity. And we ran them across the scale and we showed you guys the real world numbers not the made up numbers that people always want to show you we want to show you what it's really going to look like because we all know most people are probably closer to full capacity than they are under so that's why we decided to do this test today or this experiment this video because we wanted to see what are the real numbers and what's it really like so after doing the testing what is our opinions on the trucks well surprisingly the opinion on both trucks is still the same. I love both of them. I actually wanted a 450. I got a 350 because of the data you saw today because we knew the 450 would be overloaded because it doesn't have as much payload capacity. But let's not talk about that just yet. Let's talk about the good stuff. So I will say the F450 turning radius is awesome. Like I could really get used to that. I mean, we, we both were not very good at backing the trailer in or driving it because he was used to a 450 that turns. So he was actually getting himself in bad positions. And I was used to a 350 that doesn't turn. So I wasn't even using the turning radius the whole time we drove it. I just kept driving it like it's my truck. So I was swinging wide everywhere. But besides the turning radius, I will say the trucks are fairly identical. I'm gonna go ahead and say it. This is the part that most of you guys are not gonna like to hear. An F450 is just an F350 with some added features that make it a less capable truck as far as payload capacity goes. I went ahead and said it. The F450 and the F350 are basically the same truck. They're both class three trucks rated at 14,000 pounds. Now I know a lot of you are gonna tell me, but we all know the F450 is a D-rated truck. Well, I will not disagree completely with you. The 450 does have some upgraded features that are load bearing as far as the axles, the tires and the rims, but it's built on the same frame with the same rear leaf springs. So I'm not gonna argue that it's not derated. I'm just gonna say it's rated as a 14,000 pound vehicle and it's a class three truck. But I will poke the bear a little bit and say, most likely all the trucks that are one ton duties are derated because this truck right here could probably also handle more than 14,000 pounds as well as the Ram and the Chevrolet because they all have to stick to the 14,000 pound rating because anything over that is a commercial vehicle. So all the manufacturers are actually probably derating their trucks just to stay within the limits of the law. So let's talk about the scale tickets today. So with our camper, which is a 20,000 pound camper, we were able to overload both my truck by 60 pounds and the 450 by 120 pounds. But if they were equally equipped, we would have overloaded the 450 by almost 600 pounds. But that was what this video was about. I wanted to show that in real world numbers, we could max out an F350 and an F450 with a 20,000 pound camper. Now there are bigger campers out there. There's 21,000 pound campers, there's 24,000 pound campers, and Lux even makes a 26,000 pound camper. The reason I'm doing all this is because I wanted to show that the campers are outgrowing the trucks if you want to stay legal. That with a 20,000 pound camper, we can max out both this truck and the 450. So if you have a 21,000 pound camper, a 24,000 pound camper, or a 26,000 pound camper, it's time to start looking for a bigger truck. Like perhaps the actual 450, the cabin chassis model, or the Dodge 5500. Or maybe even it's time to step up to the Freightliner Sport chassis because these trucks right here are at their upper limits on just 20,000 pounds. All right, so one last parting thought about today's video. 
you may not travel the same way we do. Your camper may not be as full, may not be as heavy. You may not have a full family with you, but you have a big camper. And I know we all want F450s and you can want an F450 all you want, but the heavier and the bigger your camper gets, the more likely it is you need an F350. So just keep that in mind next time you're driving down the road that the heavier you get, you may be in the wrong truck. All right, man, thanks for bringing your truck out. Let's go no do problem. the test. I actually thought there'd be a huge difference between these trucks. Yeah, I did too. It was surprising that they were so close. Hey, who's that coming up? I believe I know that guy. You know that guy? Yeah. Who is he? Where'd you four boys need a bigger truck? <laughs>